Hello my friends, welcome back to Watch Addiction Watch Reviews. Today we have a really, really nice and well-crafted watch from D1 Milano, a, band, a brand based in Italy. And this is their new chronograph, the Panda chronograph. And it's just an overall really, really nice watch. As you can see, this is the box it comes in. You get all your warranty and information, your manual in here. And here is the watch. Get you a little closer look at that. As you can see, it's a really, really nice watch. Obviously, the bracelet takes hints from the Audemars Piguet line, and the case is sort of, you know, a Nautilus-styled case. It's not a one-to-one -one homage of anything, I would say, but it's a very, very well-made watch, and I'm really, really surprised at the quality this company is able to put out for the price. Let me get this out of the box, and let's get into it. In front of you, here is the D1 Milano chronograph in the flesh. A very, very nice-looking watch. It has some nice weight to it as well. Uh, so starting off some basic uh, stuff about this watch, it sells for about 445 US dollars direct from their website, uh, which I will drop a link down in the description below. The case is solid 316L stainless steel, pretty much brushed all around, as you can see here, including this very nice shiny bracelet when the light hits it. Now the case diameter, we're looking at a 41.5 millimeter case diameter, a case thickness of 11 millimeters, a lug to lug width of 52 millimeters, you have an integrated uh, stainless steel bracelet here, so you won't have to worry about a lug width, but you can buy a rubber or leather strap to replace that. As you can see, you can uh, pop this thing out right here, and then you can take this off, and you can change the strap if you want to. Anyway, uh, there are many different variations, but this one just happened to you know catch my eye. It's a Panda Chronograph, which is one of the most sought after you know color combinations out there in the watch world, and it's really quite stunning with that nice kind of eggshell white dial with the black subdials, the black date wheel. Everything is really symmetric and fits into place, and nothing really looks out of place here. The watch also does have a nice flat sapphire crystal with inner anti-reflective coating, which is always better for legibility. As you can see, this is a pretty legible watch here with those kind of off gray hands. You have the black subdials, and then you have your chronograph hand, your black date wheel applied silver markers on the dial. We get a 60 minute countdown chronograph. This is running a VK63 um, Seika Mecha Quartz movement. I uh, will get more into that towards the end of the video. But as you can see, your running seconds is down here at six, your 60 minutes is over here, and it comes with a 24 hour subdial as well. The crown itself is very reminiscent of AP. Uh, it's pull and push. We only get about 50 meters of water resistance on this watch. This is not a dive watch or anything like that. Now the polished parts on the watch would be the pushers here, which are quite long and rectangular, very easy to push. Also, on these sides of the watch are highly polished over here on each angle, as you can see here, which is very nice. And uh, some big, you know, points on this watch that are very nice are the case finishing and cut and the bracelet. There are no sharp edges or anything like that, which is always nice to see from a company. They have been definitely stepping their game up. I reviewed one of their watches a couple of years ago, and their quality has definitely improved compared to their new models that they have in 2020, I must say that. And the prices are not that bad either. Now... Uh, the bracelet, let's get to the bracelet first. So this bracelet's like extremely high end, very fluid, very nicely finished with a nice brush finish. And when the light hits it, it just glitters, uh, which is really nice there. It's something you'd see on more of like a luxury watch than a watch that costs, you know, about $445. As you can see, we get a nice D1 Milano signed clasp here. There's not much branding on this watch, and I think that's okay. And if you open this up, you get a really, really really solid clasp. I mean, this thing clamps down and it's not moving or coming off. I mean, this is really, really solid and some great work. As you can see, the bracelet is also extremely, extremely fluid. It just kind of rolls through your fingers there and the finishing is no exception either. It's very good. It does taper down here towards the end as well from the top. Now, um, the movement itself. So we get a pull and push crown, as you can see, this is a chronograph, obviously. Your button over here is going to start the sweeping hand. So on the Seiko VK63 Mecha Quartz movement, we get a mechanical, a mechanical module for the chronograph, and then we get a quartz movement for the time. So it's going to keep great time. It runs on a battery, but you get that nice smooth sweep, and it kind of feels like a chronograph button when you push uh, to start, stop, and reset the chronograph, which is very nice. You can see I'm going to stop it there and then reset it and it flies right back showing you that it is you know has that chronograph module um, that makes it mechanical considering you know if you have something like a Ronda 
movement, a rhondic chronograph movement, it's going to sweep back from the quartz movement, but this is just going to fly back like a, you know, a mechanical chronograph, which is pretty cool. And that's pretty much to the chronograph. Now, you pull the crown out one position, we get a quick set date over here, very legible in black to match the three subdials. And then your final position is your hacking position. We can set the time here. Nice long hands which reach all the way out to the end of the dial, which I do appreciate, as well as the, uh, the chronograph hand. I always appreciate that. Uh, it just makes things look a lot more professional and, you know, the quality, it looks a lot, it looks a lot better. Anyway, uh, taking a look at the case back of the watch, I didn't show you that yet. Just open this up. As you can see, the case back is fairly simple, held down by real screws, as you can see there. Uh, 2020 D1 Milano Chronograph Collection, 50 meters, um, brushed, very simple. I think it's fine just like that. There's the watch on my 6.5 inch wrist. So it's 50, uh, 52 lug to lug, as you can see. It is a chronograph, so obviously it's going to be a little bit bigger. I would say it's only about a millimeter too big for my wrist, but definitely, you know, definitely can use it. The bracelet conforms nicely to your wrist there, as you can see. And you get those nice polished sides on the bezel. Uh, which really do stand out. It's definitely a watch that will get noticed. It has that nice size to it, but it's very thin at 11 millimeters. And uh, they're able to do that, you know, because they have the VK63 Mecha Quartz movement in there. If they had a Valju 7750, first of all, the price would be triple, and it would be much thicker at like 15 millimeters because those movements are much thicker. Um, but I've never had a problem with these movements, you know. And also the bracelet is using pins instead of screws. But like I said, it's a great bracelet. I really don't, it really doesn't bother me that they're using pins. Um, you know, for the price, I'd rather have them put the quality into the finishing in this great bracelet and the nice cut of the case, the finishing and everything. So that's pretty much going to sum it up for the D1 Milano chronograph. It's a very nice looking chronograph. I must say, I rarely say this, but this feels like you know, obviously D1 Milano isn't a micro brand. Uh, let's get that out there. They have many retailers. Um, they're sold all around the world. They have many outlets that they sell through online and in stores. So they're definitely not a micro brand. Um, maybe that's one of the reasons they're able to offer this great quality. They have a bigger network. So furthermore, guys, I think this watch is very well made. You know, down from the case to the bracelet, you're really getting, getting an exceptional quality watch. And they definitely stepped their game up. Um, I don't see any quality control issues on my end. Everything works great. You know, we get that great uh, Seiko Mecha Quartz movement, the great finishing on the case, and the bracelet. So definitely do, do let me know what you think of this watch. I think it's a great watch. If you're looking for something like an AP alternative or a Nautilus alternative, I think this can be a great option for you and something that can last quite some time. The quality is very, very good, and I'm, I'm re I really, really do mean that. Uh, once you have one of these in hand, you'll definitely realize why... You know, I'm definitely recommending this watch. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. As usual, definitely like the video, dislike it if you don't like it. And let me know what you think as usual. You can always write a comment. It takes three seconds, guys. And I will see you guys in the next one.